G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. We're up nice and close and personal today because we're going to be looking at uh, finishing off this building here. Um, I know it was last week, several, several days ago, so thank you very much for your patience while we get around to finishing off this tutorial. Last time we went through putting the texture on this building, some interesting comments there on that video, um, and hopefully as we go through painting this tonight, you know, we'll see it come alive. Now, all the work we're going to do here is going to be with uh, spray cans, uh, different coloured rattle cans, so, excuse me, um, you could use an airbrush or you could use, uh, you know, a regular paintbrush. I'm just going to use rattle cans because this is MDF and it's coated in pasta and it'll be very quick and easy. So let's get on with it. The first one we're going to do is um, the British Paint Spray Easy, the flat black that we use a lot of this at the studio to, uh, you know, uh, base coat our MDF models. Um, we're not really sealing them. We don't need to seal them. This is uh, not going to soak into a raw MDF, but I mean, as you can see, we've coated this anyway. So first job is to uh, uh, get the inside of the model. Let's get rid of the roof here. Um, get the inside of the model and the outside of the model all primed black. Now before I go any further, I should just mention that if you're spraying indoors like I am, I'm in a, a, a spray booth as you can see, but you know my filter on it is a little bit dirty, really you should be wearing a respirator. Um, but uh, otherwise, get a spray booth and have at it, they're amazing things. really all we need to do we just want a basic uh, you know black coat on there we are going to spray this with three different colors so um, whilst we wait for this to dry I'm going to hit it with a hair dryer um, you know go off and entertain yourself well actually you don't really need to because it's going to be a split second right about now okay there we go we're back quite literally about two minutes under a hair dryer you know I love this uh, spray easy um, uh, from uh, British paints it's uh, touch dry in 10 minutes so a couple of minutes under a hair dryer and you know it's uh, you know it's done as you can see they're probably I don't know if you can see there's a couple of shiny spots still on this model but you know that's not a problem that's not the paint being wet that's just maybe there's some PVA or something underneath it and with this paint when you uh, when you spray it on there you end up with these glossy patches but you know that's perfectly fine okay next step is to spray some of this stuff on here this is from Sigma 80 it's a, a graffiti paint that I pick up from uh, one of the graffiti stores here in or art supply stores in Melbourne for, uh, from Villain um, and this is the A534 color um, I've used this before in lots of other videos and this is going to give me my base coat so I've already given this can a good shake now it's time to base coat the whole model Oh, as you can see, my can's spluttering a little bit. That's probably just the nozzle on this can. And I don't know if you can see that, you know, I'm not trying to coat the whole model. I'm not really too fast. I just want to get, you know, my base coat on there. A little bit of that black might show through and that's perfectly fine. That's part of the reason why we undercoated it black. Now, I'm not too concerned about the inside of the building, so I'm just gonna give it just a very quick spray. I 
and that's it. There we go. Now, again, this is a very fast drying paint, this one. Um, so I'm going to hit it with the hair dryer for a, you know, a minute or two and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so there we go. Just a very quick uh, spray now with, again, another Sigma 80 color. This one is A1011. Um, again, I picked up from, uh, from Villain, uh, from the art supply store. I've also already given this can a shape, but uh, so all we want to do now is just, just give this just a very, you know, patchy and light spray. We want some of that brown that we've got on there to show through. Not too much of it. Obviously, we, we want a lighter color building, but um, so we're just, you know, misting, I guess you could say, this color onto our building. I'd give the inside just a little dash. How much attention you pay to the inside of your buildings is up to you, but you know, I'm not a huge indoor playing sort of person. Um, so, you know, that'll be about it for me. And you know, we'll just, we'll just let that dry now. Again, it's a very fast drying paint. So, as you guessed, a couple of minutes under a hair dryer and she'll be done. Okay, so next color we're gonna use is this A591. Again, it's another Sigma 80 paint uh, from the same store, of course. Um, and we're just going to give this, again, like we did with that second spray, just a very, very light coat of this stuff. There we go, that's about it. And again, as you guessed, under the hair dryer for a couple of minutes, then it's ready to start weathering this. Or oh, actually, we need to do a little bit of dry brushing first, and then we can get to the weathering. Okay, so that's how our spray's done. Our, our base coat, our black base coat, and the three colors that we're gonna put on here. And as you can see, or I hope you can see, now the top of this building has been weathered a little bit, but hopefully you can see, actually let's turn this off because we don't need that on anymore. Um, Hopefully you can see that there is a little bit of difference between the top one and the bottom one. Now the, bob, the top one's been dry brushed with a little bit of white and the bottom one hasn't. You could, I mean, you could use it like that, a little bit of weathering and you know, it'd, it'd look fantastic. I mean, there's, there's color variation in there and you know, it, it, it looks very, very nice. Um, but I'm gonna dry brush this just so it matches the top a little bit. And um, I don't have any here at home, um, any, uh, sample pots of paint so I'm just going to simply use this um, a white from Vallejo any color white you've got will be fine and it's just going to be a normal dry brush so I've got here oh, underneath the table just a you know a piece of cardboard or whatever you dry brush with a little bit of paint and you know it's a normal dry brush so a little bit of paint onto your brush and then we wipe it all off And then we start applying that to our building. And how much of this you decide to put on there is, is, is totally up to you. So I'm making some very subtle changes here, but like I said, uh, you know, dry brush this however you want. I'm using pure white just to give me that final highlight 
Uh, but I'm going to go through and do the rest of this model and then we'll come back. Right, so now I'm done now with the dry brushing and as you can see in some parts I've got, you know, some of these big patches of white where my dry and where my brush wasn't really uh, very uh, uh, dry, so to speak. And you can also notice now at this stage, and this is a really good example, that the texturing on the top of my building is slightly different than the texturing on the bottom of the building. Um, and then, you know, that's because I textured them at different times. And that method that I showed before is really very dependent on how long you let that uh, spackle, that wall filler set up before you start smoothing it over with, uh, you know, that sponge that I showed. So you can certainly see that there's a difference in the texture here. You know, you can, it's, it's a good method. You can get a lot of variation and, you know, if you play around with it, you get some very interesting results. Um, anyway, it's time for uh, the next part. And for that, um, we're going to be using this Woodcraft stain. Now I've zoomed in on one of the cameras um, so you can sort of see uh, this happening here. This is a water-based stain. I picked this up from uh, our local uh, uh, hardware store. The colour that I'm using is Antique Walnut. It comes in all different sorts of colours. Um, it's really up to you what colour you prefer to use. Um, I like using this because it's water-based so you can rinse it out in water. It's very easy to do or very easy to use. Now I've got two brushes here just an old brush for application and a larger softer brush this is quite a soft brush for feathering and smoothing out um, the stain that we're about to apply excuse me the stain that we're about to apply so if I put that off to one side um, I'm just going to load a little bit up on my brush you know I don't have a lot on there um, let's cover up this patch here first so I'm just going to drizzle a bunch on there and then with my soft brush, I'm just going to feather that out. And um, you can see this is great for creating streaks and grime and all that sort of stuff. Um, and we put a little bit more at the top of the building here, a little bit on top. Just pull it down a little bit. And then again with our dry brush, we're just going to go through and pull that down. Now it's nice to have a piece of paper towel handy to be able to wipe this brush off as it starts to soak up more of that liquid. And then as an example, down the bottom here we want you know, more of this. That's probably a little excessive, but um, the example still stands. Um, and then we just feather this in, pull it up into the building this is one of those situations where perhaps you might want to have that paper towel to help pull some of this off. But you can certainly see the, the variation in the colour there. Let's um, put a couple of very small streaks in. So just a little dash and then we start pulling that down. With our brush, with our soft brush. And really that's all there is to it. Now it's just a matter of going through and, you know, adding as much weathering to this building as you want. Like I said, you can get that stain in different sorts of colours. Um, and so if you want to have a, a bunch of tonal variation in your model, you know, different colours are going to help you do that. Um, but there we go. It's as simple as that. I'll finish this up and then we'll have a look. I've got no idea, as I think I might have mentioned at the beginning of the video, where the roofs for these buildings have gone. But, you know, there we go. I'll finish this up. We'll come back and have one last look before my batteries go flat. Um, because I haven't plugged any power in um, and there we go it's as simple as that okay so I'm almost finished with the weathering now as you can see the, you know, the buildings looking very nice all I'm gonna do now is in the corners of the buildings uh, corner of the roof sections I'm just gonna add um, let's see if we can get a, a tidy shot of this maybe here we go um, a bunch of grime up in the corners around here you know where it's all gonna collect and that's, uh, you know, just feather that out a little bit, clean up the wall section. And, um, you know, that's about it, really. And there we have it. So um, once I find the roofs, I might come back and paint the roofs and this surface here gray. Um, I've seen that, uh, an example of that using, again, our desert buildings uh, from Knights of Dice on... Um, uh, some pictures on one of the Facebook groups. I think it might have been Spectre Operations. They probably shared 
on uh, the uh, Modern uh, Wargaming Group. Again, links are in the description. And they look great with, you know, grey, like, concrete roofs and floors and stuff. They look fantastic. But in, in terms of, you know, texturing and painting, very quickly and very easily, um, these sorts of buildings, to achieve this sort of effect, you know, it's very, very easy. There we go. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I'll catch you next time, hopefully with something that you find interesting. And um, don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below, other techniques that perhaps you might use, or um, you know, uh, other sort of interesting things to do with these sorts of models um, that you can uh, pick up from a whole bunch of different sorts of people. There we go. I'm going to ramble. I'll catch you next time. See ya.